Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Yesenia Ramirez. I'm one of the instructors and the recruiter for the New Mexico Corrections Department in Santa Fe at the Training Academy. And my name is Vicente Caballero. I'm also a recruitment officer for the New Mexico Corrections Department. And today we are basically just going to have this meeting with you. Uh, we're going to attempt to answer all the questions uh, that come up when talking about what the hiring process is, academy, pay, anything of these processes. And we'll be talking about two uh, positions in, in particular, which is correctional officer and probation and, and parole officer. All right, so let's talk about our minimum requirements. Some of our minimum requirements to become a correctional or probation and parole officer are you do have to be at least 18 years of age. You do have to be a US citizen. You have to be a, a high school graduate or have your GED completed. If you are currently in high school, we will have you wait until you graduate this year. I know that's a little strange right now, but you do have to have that completed. No felony convictions and have a valid driver's license. For probation and parole, we also require that you either have an associate's degree from an accredited college or university in sociology, psychology, criminal gesture, or a related field. Or you may have two years of correctional officer experience with a juvenile facility or with the Department of Corrections. So as, as I said before, um, we recruit and we are looking for two positions in particular. Uh, we're gonna be talking about correctional officer position and probation and parole officer. So we're gonna start there with a correctional officer. Uh, if you want to apply for a correctional officer position within the state of New Mexico, basically uh, you would be working within the state uh, prison facilities. Uh, we do have 11 through the state. Um, so you can choose different places within the state to work and you can also uh, choose which facility you wanna work for. Um, the first step you would have to go through for that would be apply online. Uh, the website is www.spo.state.nm.us. Um, once you get there, you can go to the search option and search for a correctional officer cadet position. Uh, it's going to take you to the application. Uh, one of the keys there is, it's going to tell you that the position is based in Santa Fe. Uh, this is basically because the training academy is located in Santa Fe. But once you get going through your um, application process and your screening process, you will tell us what facility you want to work with and where within the state you're, you're going to be located. So don't worry about that time of application. If you see a Santa Fe, go ahead and apply for that position anyways, and you'll get to choose where you want to go at a later time. You do have to complete the one day screening process. Um, Ms. Ramirez will be going through what that entails here in a minute um, and, and, and how you do that right now. Uh, most of it is conducted at the New Mexico Corrections Training Academy in Santa Fe, um, but we have started doing uh, some portions of it remotely due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, once you do your application and you complete your one day screening process where we run your background and do everything to decide whether you meet the criteria to be a correctional officer, then uh, we forward your name to the facility that you told us you wanted to work for, uh, put you in contact with the HR representative from that facility, and they will put you through what's called the hiring process, uh, basically documentation, forms, policies you have to do. Uh, you're also going to have to be doing a drug screening and a uh, medical screening. Um, that's one change that has happened with the medical screening, and that's actually has to be done by you with your personal provider. Um, once we get in contact with you and, and, and start you in the process, um, we will send you documentation to go see your doctor. Uh, it'll tell the doctor what, what uh, type of medical assessment you're going to be going through and this will just basically be telling us that you're medically clear to conduct the job. Uh, this is all done again with your uh, private um, provider and it would have to be done on, on your own dime. 
Um, once you pass everything and have been hired, uh, then we put you down for a roster uh, and a date for the academy. Um, your academies are eight weeks long. They're all done there in Santa Fe at the New Mexico Correction Academy. We do have uh, through the year, a couple of satellite uh, academies where um, and remote places within the state, we, we hold the eight week academy so that cadets don't have to travel or leave their areas of residence as, as much as possible. Um, right now, and, and uh, this is kind of a change also because of COVID, we are conducting uh, remote uh, uh, academies, which are all done through Zoom. Um, it's going to be basically most of uh, your six weeks are going to be all theory. Uh, you can do all of that through a computer. We supply the Chromebook. We supply everything, all the materials that you're going to need to take your training. You'd just be doing it from home uh, would be the difference. And then at a later time, we would set up for you to come and finish the last two weeks of the academy, which would be all the practicals like firearms, DTs, chemical agents, anything that you need to do for that. So that's the process for a correctional officer. For provision and parole, basically um, uh, go in, apply at SPO, again, like you had to do for a correctional officer. One of the things that changes there are the requirements are different, are, are, are stated before. So make sure you go to the website and, and um, look at the requirements uh, a little bit better if you need to. Um, once your application is submitted, uh, it goes to that office where you uh, request to work at. A supervisor will go through the, through the application, make sure you meet the minimum requirements. That will call you in for an interview. If after the interview they are interested in hiring you for that office, then they would refer you to us for your screening process. Same one day screening process that I just went over, uh, also done in Santa Fe. Um, you will also go through your hiring process with HR, medical, drug screening, everything that I just talked about before also applies. But one of the other differences for probation and parole is the fact that your academy is only six weeks long. Uh, and uh, it's also right now at some portions are being done remotely. Also keep in mind for correctional officers, you will come in and do your screening with me once. once you're screened. If you decide to change your mind, you're welcome to do so if you're still within that process. We can send you to one of the different facilities. For probation and parole, you do have to make an application for each office that you wish to work for. You can apply to as many offices as you'd like, interview as much as you'd like. If there's you're out of state, maybe there's six offices you wish to look at. If they have six postings, you're welcome to apply to those. If you're selected for more than one position, and you're still within the screening process with us at the training academy, you get to choose where you go. So maybe you got three offers, you get to choose whoever is going to be closer to family, maybe it's a metro area, maybe it's a rural area, whatever your preferences will be at that time. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our screening process. Our screening is conducted twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Right now, due to COVID-19, we're doing this by appointment. So please, please make sure that you schedule your appointment so we don't have to turn you away. We'll start by doing part of your packet. Most of your documentation is a written application. Well, I will send to you beforehand. You'll get that back to me. I'll start reviewing that. When you come in, you'll come in for a background investigation, fingerprints, and a psychological written test and interview. It's a test about 500 questions. This is all a test about you. So there's really nothing that you can study for. We're just asking you questions about you and getting to know you. Also, if you are out of state right now for the restrictions with New Mexico, we do require that you quarantine and obtain a negative test result before coming to see us. We understand that that might not be possible financially or with time, family, stuff like that. So if you are out of state, you do have the option to do all of this online. Please keep in mind, this will lengthen your process from about two weeks to anywhere from four days to six weeks. It's just how fast we're able to communicate, get things back, back and forth. Um, you will have to be in constant communication with me by email. And this, um, the process will be broken down to step by steps. I will not move you forward in the process until I 
have you complete the first process. So it may be a little lengthy, it may be a little bit more tedious. So if you wish to come in to complete your application in person, that's absolutely great. If you're in the state of New Mexico and wish to complete this process online, we there must be extenuating circumstances for you to qualify for that. But if you have questions, um, if you qualify for that, please get in contact with us and we'll let you know. Right now, um, one of the major differences from the last time um, that we did this and that you might have heard is our physical agility test. That used to be part of our screening process. That is no longer the case. You will only come in and do the above mentioned steps with us for screening. The physical agility will now be at the end prior to your graduation. So during the academy, we encourage you, before you even start the academy, we encourage you to keep fit, be active. Um, during the academy, if, we're, if you're at the academy with us in Santa Fe, it will be mandatory and part of your curriculum. Um, if it's a blended academy or a virtual academy, then you will be doing that on your own time. Our exit standard for agility are 16 standard push-ups, no modified push-ups, a 300 meter run under 80 seconds, 18 sit-ups, and a one mile run under 12 minutes and 22 seconds. So as we talked before, uh, for correctional officers, we're talking about an eight-week academy. Um, you do uh, start getting a paycheck from the time that you are hired. Uh, basically, for those eight weeks, you're going to be getting uh, cadet pay. Uh, that would be 18, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 15 55 per hour um, while you're going through those eight weeks of, of academy. Even now, um, as far as doing academies remotely, um, you're still doing your training, so you're still getting paid. Uh, once you graduate, then you go up to, to uh, 1875. Um, when you go to a regular academy that would be based either in Santa Fe or at a remote location or, or, or somewhere different, uh, we do provide everything for you, uh, like uh, your meals, your uniforms, any type of material, firearms, chemical agent, whatever it is that, that you need, um, for, for that training, we will supply. Um, you come, you stay at the academy, you do have to bring personal items like hygiene and, and, and certain things like that. Our dormitories are equipped with um, like a laundry mat for you to do all of that. You just have to supply your own, your own, your own equipment. Um, the academy runs Monday through Thursday. So it's 10 hour shifts. Um, you would come in Sunday night before the academy starts on Monday. Uh, you would run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday at five o'clock after your uh, class is, is done, you're eligible to leave the academy if, if, if you wish to do so. Um, the reason I say this is because pretty much every academy, we do have people from out of state that have relocated for this job and they may not be settled uh, within New Mexico yet. So uh, if you're somebody from out of state and, and you wish to remain at the academy through those days that the academy is not happening, we can help you out like that. Um, you may be an applicant that comes from, for example, Las Cruces, and you just don't have the money or the means to be going back and forth every week. You can uh, stay at the academy. We can help out with that. We do offer um, three-week certification by waiver program. Um, so if, if you are an officer that, that, if you are somebody that has been a correctional officer in a different state, or maybe for a county facility within Santa Fe, or maybe, um, for example, you, you've worked at, uh, uh, let's say, MDC uh, here in Albuquerque, um, then you've already gone through an academy. As long as you can uh, provide for us proof that you attended at least 160 hours of basic training, uh, that would not include any OJT or any other training that you did after the basic. Um, and it has to be within five years. So if, if you're still employed or you were employed three years ago, you can do that. Um, once you go five years without doing the job of a correctional officer, then you have to apply to go through a, a normal academy. Um, there's some differences here. Your academy is only three weeks. So basically what we're doing is we're taking into consideration all the training and the time that you spent working there uh, before. And we're only doing a three week 
a three week academy. And the other difference is that it's an eight hour shift. So you'd be Monday through Friday. Um, the CBW classes are also, you have the availability to either stay at the academy or if you're close, um, you, you can travel on a daily basis. Um, as I mentioned, you would start at 1555 for cadet. And then once you receive your certification, you would go to uh, 1875 per hour. For our probation and parole officers, the academy is a little bit different. You are only in the academy for six weeks. You'll still be paid throughout the academy, throughout your training. Once you're hired on by your office, though, you will begin working in your office un until the academy. And your pay rate, depending on your experience and your education, might not necessarily be the 2008. So you might come in a little bit higher than that based on that. Um, but you will be paid throughout your training. So please keep that in mind. You do have the option of going home in most cases and lodging and meals will be provided as well if you if needed. Um, all your training materials will also be provided. You'll be working in training eight hours Monday through Friday. Right now, because of everything going on, again, due to COVID, we might have either a blended academy or a virtual academy. So in the correctional facilities, uh, you would be working uh, shift work. We do have some facilities that run 12 hour shifts and we do have some facilities that run uh, eight hour shifts. So for example, if we're talking about an eight hour, you would have morning shift, day shift and swing shift. Uh, those facilities would be in Los Lunas, Central New Mexico Correctional Facility, Springer Correctional Center, and Southern New Mexico in, in Las Cruces. So basically you would be working five days eight, eight, uh, eight hour shifts. Um, if you happen to go to a facility that offers 12 hour shifts, um, then you would be working the day shift or the night shift. That would be from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. at night and 6 p.m. at night to 6 a.m. in the morning. Any shift that is uh, within the p.m. times uh, is entitled of a uh, 60 cents differential. So for example, if you're working at a facility that runs um, 6 a.m. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, those hours you would be you would have an ad additional 60 cents per hour in the night shifts. Um, the facilities around 12 hours are Western New Mexico and Grants, uh, Penitentiary of New Mexico and Santa Fe, Northeastern New Mexico and Clayton, and uh, Roswell Correctional Center in Roswell, New Mexico. Um, I, I would just like to mention here, as you can see. Um, these are our state facilities. We do also have some contracts with private facilities. So in total, we have 11 uh, facilities where you could choose to work. So if you're somebody that um, wants to apply for this, one of the good things about, uh, about corrections is the fact that you can relocate if you want to. Um, you can stay close to where to home or, or once you can work for Santa Fe, the facility in Santa Fe, you've already done what you want to do in that facility, you can very easily transfer to the Los Lunas facility within, within the same training, uh, not having to do anything additionally. And there's a lot of places where you can choose to work. And just remember that with New Mexico Corrections Department, you get to choose where you go. We will not tell you where you have to go. It is your choice what facility you wish to work for. For probation and parole, we have 28 offices statewide. If you look on our little map here, um, all the little red dots are going to be offices that you can choose to be based out of. Santa Fe, Roswell, and Las Cruces, as well as Albuquerque do have an expanded supervision case. So those offices will have um, probation and parole officers too. That is a little bit different. It's one step over the PO1. But again, you can work anywhere. If you were, live in maybe Trinidad, you're welcome to work in Raton. If you live in Arizona, you can come work in Gallup, maybe even Farmington. So there's always that option. Our regions, we have four regions throughout the state. As you can see, region one is Northern New Mexico. Region two is the metro area. Region three is the Southwest and region four, the Southeast.
So some of the benefits of working uh, for either a correctional officer or probation and parole officer, if you're choosing to go for a correctional officer, as I stated, that is within the state facilities, um, working in, in, in the prison facilities, uh, you would be entering into a 25 year retirement plan through PARA, through the state. Um, if you choose to go with probation and parole, which is um, a little bit different, it's more of a community um, officer, you, you're in the office, in the community, uh, after an offender has completed their sentence in, in the correctional facilities, you would be in charge with making sure they complete their, their, their parole, anything that that entails. Uh, you would be entering their 30-year retirement plan, also through PARA. Uh, they both offer full medical, uh, full dental, full dental uh, and paid leave. So as you can see up there uh, per year and after a year of service, so you have to have a year with us before you, you're entitled to uh, some of these benefits. Uh, but for example, 10 days of holiday pay uh, every year, uh, two personal days a year, uh, 12 days of annual leave and 10 days of sick leave. If you, for example, if you go back to what we had talked about with the shift work, uh, if you work for one of those facilities that, that works 12 hours, um, so you're working, you're basically only working seven days out of, the, out of the two weeks. And if you really do the math, you're only working six months out of the year. Uh, that's not including your leave and, and your paid. Um, now you do have a lot of availability for like overtime, so you can't work more time. Um, one of the things about corrections is it, it's, it's not necessarily a job. Uh, corrections is, is, is a career. It's, it's, it's a place where there's a lot of promotion um, opportunities. Uh, if, you go, if you go to being a, a probation and parole officer, you are going to be a cadet. From there, you're going to be a probation and parole officer one. Then you can promote to probation and parole officer two. Um, you could be an office supervisor. You can be a region manager and so on and so forth. If we go back to talking about correctional officers, you start as a cadet, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, major, unit manager, there's, there's a lot of availability um, uh, to work. The other thing about corrections is there's, there's other entities that look to the training that you have. Um, for example, think about the FBI, you have to have so many years of other law enforcement before you can even apply to that. So this would be some of the uh, training that, that you are, that, that would qualify you for that. On the correctional side, um, on, if you're applying to be a correctional officer, your, your uniforms, your equipment, everything that you're going to need to do your job through your career will be supplied. So you'll be getting uniforms, boots, jackets, anything you need. For probation and parole, that option is, is not there. Basically, just because they're, they're, it's community, uh, when you're in the office, you wear a certain you wear a certain clothing. If you have to go to court, you have to wear different clothing. If you have to go out on the field, so there's 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 more variety to what you have to wear. So you, you don't have that 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 um, requirement there, but but um, you can get it for correctional officers. So please contact us at the following information. Um, so Chief Caballero can be reached at vicente.caballero at state.nmus or by cell phone at 505-259-9856. Myself, I can be reached at yesenia.ramirez at state.nm.us or at 505-270-9787. Um, please be advised that right now we are receiving a large number of calls. So please bear with us or shoot us an email and we can get you that own information. Also, these are cell phone numbers. So if you're more comfortable texting, um, just so you don't remember, shoot us a text right now and we'll get you some of that information as soon as we can. Make sure and include your email address on there and we can get you everything that you need. Um, be advised that New Mexico Department of Corrections and the state of New Mexico is always looking for other positions. It might not necessarily be that you're looking for a security position to be an officer with us, but there's a lot of other things that may interest you. So please visit our website at www.spo.state.nm.us for more information and to view all our positions. You can come in as classification officer, library, medical, um, countless, countless, also all our ranking positions. If you come from a different facility and you're not necessarily wanting to come as an officer and want to come in as rank, you can see those as well. 
um, and you're always welcome to look at positions statewide. If you do visit our website, make sure you click on Department of Corrections so you can see our specific postings. So before we go on to the questions, there's a couple of things that I want to go back and, and, and touch up on, 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 on what we're doing. Um, right now, uh, there are uncertain times. There's, we're all learning as we go. Um, for example, talking uh, about training right now and how we're starting to do remote training, how we're starting to do Zoom training, all of this. Um, this is something that the academy had had never done in the past. Uh, we've never had the need to do it. Um, now we have the need, so we had to to evolve and and, and, and get with the times. Um, that, however, may be something that may go away. So um, you need to think about the fact that if you apply and with with your screening process can take uh, two weeks up to a month. Sometimes by the time your application goes by, all your paperwork is completed, we may be back to maybe a semi-normal where you have to do a blended academy. What do I mean by that? You have to come in for a certain time and then you have to take other training somewhere else. Um, so um, today we started a basic correctional officer academy. It's the first academy we ever started remotely. Officers came in uh, before today. Uh, they were met in the parking lot. We offered them all the training materials, like a, a complete book of every single topic that they were gonna have with student guides and, and a Chromebook that the Academy supplied for them with all the information downloaded to it. So we're, we're, we're doing it this way, uh, but we don't know if this is how corrections or how training in corrections will evolve from here on out. So one of the things, I just wouldn't want you to think I'm going to apply and from here on out, I can take this training at home. This may be the first class that we do and maybe the last class, we, we just don't know. Uh, there might be many changes. Um, so, so just make sure you, you apply at that. I know that, that we talked about the, the website, um, cd.nm.us.gov, I'm sorry. Um, go in and look at that. Uh, we may not have answered all your questions. Uh, you uh, may not have time, had gotten time to write down our number. Now when we start answering questions, you'll see the numbers up there. So write them down if you need to. Um, make sure you go to that website. That website offers you a, a place on there that's called our disqualifiers. Basically what, they, that, what that is, 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 is a list of things that would disqualify you from the process. If, uh, if you read that and you know one of those things disqualifies you, you would save yourself a lot of time and, and, and not having to enter the process if you know you're going to be eliminated somewhere through, through the middle. Um, the other thing is, you know, don't be afraid to call us. You know, uh, Yesenia touched on it. Send us a text. If you, don't, if you don't know exactly how you want to go about it or you don't know what questions you want to ask, send me a test. Tell me, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm interested in a job with corrections. Um, here's my email. Please send me information. I'll be able to send you an, a pack, full packet of information that'll answer all your questions. It'll give you a step-by-step -step process on how to apply, where you need to go, what you need to do, and each step that you need to do. So don't, if you don't want to call or you don't want to email us, shoot us a text. Uh, make sure you give us your name, um, what position you want to work for, and uh, an email address, and, and, and we can answer those questions. Once you have that information, if you still think that you need to reach out to us or email us or call us, then that might help you a little bit and make the process a little bit easier for you. So right now, we're going to start with questions. Uh, if there's any questions that came through the, the, the presentation, we'll go ahead and do the best we can to, to get them answered. To you. Uh, I could see, I, I think, uh, so question number one is, would other correctional officer experience that is uh, not juvenile experience suffice, such as core civic? So yes, as we had talked about it, um, yes, that is the case. Uh, we do offer the certification by waiver program. So if you were a correctional, a state correctional officer in a different state, Arizona, Colorado, New York, um, any any of the U.S. states, if you have worked for Core Civic, if you have worked for GEO, if you have worked for 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 any of those facilities, as long as they were as long as they were adult facilities, and you can prove that you had at least 160 hours of training, um, and that it hasn't been more than five years since you quit, give us a call. 
we'll put you through the process. You still have to do the entire screening process, go through a background, do fingerprints and do everything else, but you do qualify and you only have to do a three week academy um, instead of an eight week academy. So it's a lot easier, we can get you certified. And it's basically all we're doing is refreshing information that's already there and giving you information that's uh, unique to New Mexico. Um, if that question was in regards for the probation and parole position, yes, it does. Um, any type of correctional officer or detention officer experience totaling two years can get you certified or qualified for the position of probation and parole. The other question uh, is, is the medical assessment paid for by the Department of Corrections? So as I stated, uh, one of the processes of your screen, of your hiring process is a medical assessment. And unfortunately, no, the medical is not paid by the department. This is something that you would have to go get on, on your own budget. Um, there, there, there is possibilities that we can assist with, with maybe sending you to, to, to certain places, but that, that, that would be just kind of guiding you to where, where to go or, or where we see a lot of people doing it. Um, and basically, basically the answer is, is no. Unfortunately, we do not compensate you for getting the uh, assessment done. We do recommend that you maybe wait a little bit until you schedule that with your um, primary care physician, just in that event that everything doesn't go through. Um, we will notify you once you've been accepted to our academy and provide you that paperwork. But if you are want to wait until you are contacted by the facility and actually sign an offer letter, that is completely fine, um, just so that you have that guarantee that you're not going to be reimbursed. If you want to do that beforehand, that's also fine as well. So the next question, if an individual already has firearm certifications, such as for NRA or even correctional firearms from CoreCivic, is that sufficient enough for someone going through the academy? So it is taken into consideration and it's going to, your, your prior training is going to help you a lot through the corrections training, but we have to have you certified within our state requirements. So for example, um, let's say you are, a, like, like it said there, you're a core officer, uh, core civic officer from either a different state or somewhere in the state. Um, what you would be doing is you would be taking kind of an accelerated course for basic uh, training. You have to do a two week firearm training uh, for the CBW or the accelerated course is only four days. So yes, you still have to shoot. Yes, you still have to qualify, but it's not the same process that, that you would have to, to be done. It would be the same way with, for example, defensive tactics. If you had already taken defensive tactics somewhere else, I'm not going to put you through the two week program, but I am going to give you a three day refresher on that. Uh, chemical agents, um, you've been sprayed with OC before. Um, well, when you come to your training, we may not necessarily have to expose you directly again, which means we won't have to spray you in the face. Um, but you will have to go through at least the classroom portion because the New Mexico Corrections Department has different standards than other, other facilities. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. Um, our next question is, if I have to wait till the 1st of February to start, what date do you suggest I apply? Um, I'm not sure if you're referencing um, when you can apply. You can submit your application at any time um, like literally any time if you want to do it tonight. And if you can't come in for screening up until February, that's the first time you get a day off, that's fine. We'll schedule you to come in then. If you're trying to do the application completely online, if you're out of state, then again, you can do that anytime online. I'll work with you. We'll just be emailing back and forth. Right now, our next academies are scheduled for March 22nd, April 5th, and the last week of May. So right now we have time to get you into that next academy. Again, due to COVID, I don't suggest you wait because we do have limited space in those academies and we'll have to roll you over. So that means your retirement has to wait and your seniority has to wait, all of that. So the sooner you can apply, the better. If you have other family commitments, anything like that, that you expect is gonna take you longer to make accommodations, we'll work with you. Um, and if you can't maybe come to this academy that we have scheduled, it can be for the one in May.
So basically, just to add to that, the faster you apply, the better. Um, your your file once 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 you go through your screening process and a file is created and you get a letter from us saying you were accepted, your file is good for six months. So from the day you get accepted, you have six months to go to an academy. If for example, our next class is March twenty second. I would, I would start my, my application process at least two months before that. Why? You may run into issues getting your um, medical assessment because COVID is on right now and you can't get in to see your doctor. Uh, we may run into issues with background information. We may run into issues where um, right now there's limited access to our correctional facility. In order for you to conduct your hiring process, you have to physically go to our correctional facilities. Uh, we may be on a lockdown. There may be many things that can happen that, that, that'll make you, you have six months. Um, if, it, if, if we end up not getting you into a class within six months and it was our fault, then um, th th there's ways that we can work to use that same information in, instead of having you do it, do it all the way through. Um, so just make sure you, you the, the faster you apply, the, the better. And do keep in mind, again, due to COVID-19, our process is constantly changing. There may be things that are in place as of today, and by the end of the week, we never know. It might change. So please keep that in mind. Please be open-minded, and we appreciate your patience and flexibility with us. All right. Well, it uh, seems like that is all the questions that we have gotten for right now. If, uh, if for any reason we didn't get to your question or you didn't ask again, you saw our information up there, give us a call, send us an email, send us a text if, if, if that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable and uh, make sure that, that you just uh, Give us what you give us what your question is, and we'll do our, our best to to answer it. As she said, the process is ever evolving, so we're changing. Uh, we've gone from a two day screening process to a one day screening process. We've gone from an entrance standard, which was physically, to now it being an exit standard. Uh, if you've been somebody that's been interested in the corrections department in the past, you may have noticed that this time we didn't talk about a polygraph exam, is because starting the first of the year. Uh, that was probably that was one of the processes that was extracted from a process as a polygraph for many different reasons. COVID, it's it's hard to do certain things like that. So th there has been a lot of changes that in the past may may have prevented you or may have um, you know not not giving you that 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 secure feeling to come and apply. So that there are some changes that we have implemented. And uh, we're, we're trying to get you to, to work. Uh, before we close out, basically, I would just like to uh, once again uh, to thank New Mexico, New Mexico Workforce Connections for helping us out. Uh, we, we do all this through them. Um, it, the, the, these are also going to be posted on their website. So if you have somebody that didn't have time to come, make, tell them go check out the video. Uh, we'll be posting it also on our website. So. Um, Thank you very much for coming and we hope to hear from you guys soon. Thank you.